Could you please start by explaining what ESG stands for and why it's become a critical part of the financial world in recent years? Uh, yes. So as you as you already mentioned, ESG stands for environmental, social, and corporate governance. Um, it's really a finance thing. Uh, that's where it's uh, been uh, uh, created and, and um, that's where people really use it and look at it. Uh, the first thing I think is to go back in time and let people know that this is not really something new. That's something that uh, started way back, I would say, at least early 20th century. You already had uh, finance uh, um, funds looking at this thing and saying, oh, we want to be a bit different. We want to invest on things that are not only business, but that includes some of these criteria that are more looking for the overall wealth or the uh, the future of mankind and doing things right, okay? So that's where things uh, start for me. It's early 20th century. In the U.S., you see the first funds, uh, but it's not something that has really spread out. Mm -hmm. um, in Europe, things start more a bit later, like I would say like in the 80s, 1980s. But again, something very niche, uh, as you've seen in a lot of different uh, businesses, like you want to differentiate yourself and you want to propose uh, to your customer something a bit different and and that way you, you can get a different uh, business. So that's also how it starts in Europe. Uh, but things start to really uh, become standardized uh, around after the, the 2000, 2010 and so on. That's where those matters really become top of mind and people start to rethink about uh, things like climate change. I think that's the main driver that out of all the uh, ESG components, like the first one, the environmental one, is the one that gets most attention. So around the, uh, the early 2000s, uh, that's when things uh, really start to take off. And uh, little by little, like, uh, like the media, the press brings all those topics uh, forward, uh, climate change being the most important one. Uh, you also have uh, things like corporate governance in there, uh, and that will make reference to things like uh, what happened to Enron, uh, this bankruptcy, and, uh, and how um, we didn't detect these kind of issues and how important it is to have a good governance. So those, all those past experience build up uh, the criteria that we will discuss later and uh, bring that to the front scene. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, Europe now is leading on this area. Um, from 2021, I think, uh, the European Commission issued an, an act uh, stating that all European funds need to report on those topics. So it's like uh, the evolution of all the financial standards. Like uh, for a long time... Uh, People didn't have to report on anything. Then we decided uh, that uh, we need to put some uh, boundaries to the stock market and so on. And we asked everyone to publish uh, their accounts every every three months and so on. So it's a bit the same. Now in Europe, funds need to say, these are the companies we're investing uh, on and these are the kind of uh, ESG structures or commitments that they, that they make. So in Europe... Uh, we have that the, that kind of uh, regulatory framework to comply with. Uh, in the US, it's still not the case, but uh, it's still appealing over there. You you have uh, investors there that care about these matters, so the products come to market. So it's becoming more and more like a vanilla topic. You have more and more uh, business, as we will see later, more and more funds being uh, steered uh, in that direction. Cool. Just from my understanding. Uh, you said that in Europe, there's already guidelines and a it, regulatory framework for this, but in North America, it's still not the case, correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, one more question. You mentioned those financial controls that happened after 2000 mm. when, you know, with the, uh, uh, with Enron and all the big financial crashes that happened after the dot-com dot era. Is 
are those controls like SOX, for example, uh, are they are those ESG uh, guidelines or controls part of that the, the, the same initiative or that's something a bit different? I would say, given that those SOX controls, for instance, uh, are standard or uh, mandatory, that's the standard, so everyone complies with them. So you really don't need to score people on that because everyone has to do it. Uh, yeah, I think that is the next level, and I think we'll talk about it later. But at some point, I will expect all this to become the standard, and everyone will do this. And we won't really talk about this in the way we're doing it today. It would be business as usual for everyone. These are the things we have to do, and we have to uh, to comply with. Excellent. But right now, it's still a bit open, and and uh, I would say that optional in most cases. <laughs> 